Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So what you are looking at here is Horus and Seth, that is Horus on the right and Seth here on the left, in a relief from the throne of Seti I. And this is apparently from the New Kingdom, obviously it's Egyptian, and this is from 1550 to 1077 before Christ. And this is courtesy of the University of Michigan. So let's say this is about 3,250 years ago. Well, when I looked at this image, I thought, well, that looks a little bit familiar. Um, there's quite a few things going on. Uh, and I may get the incorrect names for these. Uh, some of you out there are better. But uh, everything on this side is this kind of shape. Uh, it's kind of like an inflow, let's call it. Uh, so we've got an inflow, goes around up there through his fist, down here, then through a sort of complex knot and then down there. And then uh, this has got an outflow and it kind of sort of comes out from down here, around here, round that knot and then up here and round there and out there. So there are two outflows. Now we're also seeing an outflow that kind of just goes up there and a uh, Sorry, an outflow that just goes up there and then an inflow that comes down here. And in the center bit, we have an outflow that goes that way and uh, an inflow that goes down here. Okay, so there's lots of messaging going on here. So again, if that's coming in here, it's going up there, around there, around there, through this complex knot and then down into here. And then maybe it's going up there and then up over there. Okay, but this is sucking things in. This is sucking things in. This is sucking things in. Over on this side, it's spewing it out, spewing it out, spewing it out, if I'm right in reading it. But in this section center in the middle here, you have something that's spewing it out and then this is sucking it in. Okay, so, you know, you've got a give and take and... Actually, it speaks to the fact that these two guys were kind of opponents. Uh, you know, one might say a maker and a breaker. Let's put it like that. And actually, up in the top part of the stele, uh, we see a very interesting thing going on. Firstly, we've got car here, which is the symbol for spirit. So uh, something is maybe coming up here and creating this spirit, which goes into the uh, scarabay, which is the symbol of rebirth. Okay, so what's going on? Is is something giving and taking being sucked in from the environment to this point? And there's kind of an exchange going on here, but there's this beam that's going down and it looks like it's splitting whatever this is, or maybe it's grounded. I don't know. It looks like you've got some sort of heart shape here. Okay, and it's splitting right the way through that. And they both got their feet on it. Okay, so maybe they're grounded as well. But definitely something interesting going on here. And this up here. And if if there was kind of it's intersecting here, this line is intersecting between the outflow and the inflow. It's like potentially is it grabbing something? Is it elevating it up here? Uh, elevating up here. We've got the spirit section here. But then when I look at what we've got going up here. We've got these symbols here. So we've got this symbol, which is a symbol for power. We've got the Jed, which is stability. And then we've got our Ankh, which below here is the key to all hidden knowledge. And then in my view, we have the Sothic Triangle with the disruption beam here. And we have a sort of snake or whatever, a worm or something. And it's looking inwards. And then we have another worm over here. And everything on this side and everything on this side, they are mirror images. So from that center line down, you've got the, let's say, the right arm and the left arm. And then you've got the right side of the scarabay and the left side of the scarabay. You've got a snake coming in from the right, a snake coming in from the left. You've got everything arranged in a mirror, except on the right, you have some other symbols. People might like to tell me what they are, but whatever. I can see that they are different from the symbols and all the arrangement on the left. Other than this is at the top and this is kind of like in the middle. This to me looks a bit like a flower. So is this something to, I don't know, I get a sense that this is about uh, planting and growth and stuff. And on the here it gets, I get a sense it's kind of like construction. And, you know, so uh, I, I would argue that if you are 
having an outflow of, uh, um, say, let's say, spiritual energy or, or life force, then that, that will be good for growing. And if you're condensing it here, you're sucking it in, then it might be good for construction. And obviously, you know, uh, one is going to be using the same resources as the other. And so there will be a natural conflict here and you need to remain in balance. So I think this is rather wonderful. This is my interpretation of it seeing it here. But there's a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, and firstly, I'm going to throw over our sacred geometry. And what does this show us? Well, ba boom Okay, so we have the Christ center here. And the spirit is uh, coming into the Christ center. And then we have your rebirth above the Christ center. Okay, we have along the center point here and the line of uh, the... Um, the center point on this side and the uh, golden ratio line we have the worm coming in and crossing that and hold on it doesn't quite look right here and and also this looks a little bit off what is going on here well if we go back here um, and we turn on a couple of lines here you can see that just like in the Coptic Christian art that came much, much later. The one on the right is slightly elevated. It's slightly elevated. This is lower down. At first glance, they look like perfect mirrors, but they are not. They are subtly, subtly different. Yes, we've got the center line going all the way down here. Yes, these are very mirrored. But up here, one looks to be like it's above and the other one slightly below. Okay, so not only have we got the difference on the right and uh, the left on what these symbols are outside of these common mirrored symbols, the mirrored symbols aren't quite exactly right because whilst they've got a similar sort of top line, they've had to compress these and lift this up. But this one down here is basically the same line. Now, what happens if we put on the construction lines of our sacred geometry? Well, as we can see, it comes down, this knot here ties perfectly here, which is at the bottom of the lip in someone's face, okay? And this area here, what is this area here? Well, first off, let's go up. We're saying that these are in opposition to each other. One might be a maker and the other one's a breaker, giving nutrients to, plant, uh, to plants. Well, it's kind of the opposite way round, which we've got here. This is kind of the breaker on the right, but it doesn't matter. You could flip this round uh, and it would be, you know, uh, matching it. But this one is raised. This one is the pit. Uh, you know, this one's got its little uh, beanie mark in here with the, the lighter elements here and the heavier elements here. So like I say, if you, you flip this so we're looking at the backside, it would be oriented correct. But so, you know, we got the maker and breaker here. I believe that's kind of what is being represented here. The actual um, under curve here is absolutely perfect. The Christ center appears exactly above the spirit that's I believe coming from down here this intercepted area here where there's kind of like this whole inflow here and this uh, outflow going around here and the outflow is coming to here it's intercepted and something is pulled up and spiritual energy is taken out of the matter is kind of where I'm going with this and if we put in our uh, Amasa gas and tungsten, you can see very clearly that this intercepted area here is the area of the uh, in the kind of disintegration of the tungsten in the spherical area and all of this kind of material outflowing only on this side. So uh, it's kind of a, a little bit weird. Uh, so we got the outflow, is it sucking it in there? Well, it's certainly coming up this way. Um, and you know maybe it maybe it's flipped I don't know but it's very curious to me that this is the zone that this occurs and as we've already said the the Sothic triangle is in this zone sorry the destruction zone of the Sothic triangle is in this zone and we've so seen that the Caduceus spiral the the uh, from the Akkadian Sumerian type uh, uh, um, knowledge uh, extends below here and in ca indeed in the case of this the 
uh, Amaza, sorry, the, the ultrasound in Suhas Ralkar uh, that I captured in 2017. This does project below in a somewhat similar fashion to is presented here. Okay, and then lastly, if we overlay the wind hex here, uh, we can see, yes, the this projects down below, uh, but the wind hex, as it's arranged here and lines up, um, actually has its material coming out, and the line across here is where these people feet are. So, you know, it, 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 this, this uh, um, Horus and Seth, okay? So, if I put the sacred geometry on there, you can see how that all fits in. So, a little bit more information about Seth, okay? Seth, according to one source, and I'll give the references in the blog, is apparently, this is talking about the late Greco-Roman period, uh, it's saying that Seth was openly demonized, so this is about 1,900 years ago, uh, uh, so this was later um, than the stele itself. He appears in the writings of Plutarch, uh, which is about 46 to 120 an Anno Domini, uh, and it's identified with the Greek monster called Typhon. So, who is Typhon? Well, Typhon, Seth, yes, and Seth is doing the outflow, okay, the decompression of matter in my view. Typhon is the father of destructive storm winds. I'll say that again. Seth is the father of destructive storm winds. But, according to Wikipedia, we can go further back, 4,000 years ago, this is before this stele was made, to the Akkadian epic. Anzu tells the story of another combat of Ninurtia with a monstrous challenger. This second foe is the winged monster Anzu. And Anzu... Uh, is another offspring of Earth, something that nature creates. Like Typhon, Anzu roared like a lion and was the source of destructive storm winds. So, both before and after the production of this stele, the ancient people, relative to us, believed that Seth was responsible for destructive storm winds. And so I think it's quite fitting that we might consider him an active agent in the wind hex. And given the structure that you see in these systems and in these systems and in these systems where you have this one-sided thing, it is not surprising if we see material that is destroyed coming out of one side. And in fact, that is what we see in the demonstrations of Frank Polifka. And I can tell you now, it has been seen in terms of flow in the Tony Giboni, that is Rob's Windhex analog. And it would appear to have been seen in the sacred geometry inspired tests of Henk Urin. So there we go. What did the ancient Egyptians know? What did the ancient Greco-Romans know? What did the Akkadians know? And why would they represent it such? And, and, and there's so many things, like, like the forearm of here lining up with this curve, obviously the knot here, the place of um, matter uh, destruction and and this disruptive beam going through. Is it splitting rock down here? Don't know. The way these arms come in exactly to this point on both sides, the way the knot goes round and it follows up here and, you know, the faces outside these lines, it's, it's beautifully, beautifully constructed. And also the fact that this is above this, we know these typically have one structure that is above the other. You see it here, you see it here, you see it here. I think this 
is a very important scientific document. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.